Hey guys and welcome back to the channel, thank you very much for tuning in. Coming up in this episode, a good friend of mine, Chris, comes over from all the way to up north as we go out on the foxes and come across some rather cute wildlife. And of course, well, hey, this is Team Foxer after all, so we have plenty of foxes. And when I say plenty, I mean plenty of foxes. Once again, this is... We start this evening's session as all good foxing sessions should start with a quick zero check. Tonight I'm keeping my rifle in its case and Chris is using his trusty Tika 223 and Wraith combo for tonight's session. We're out with Rick in his trusty Land Rover and it's not very long at all before we get straight into the action. <laughs> On our way to the first stand though, we do pass rather a lot of rabbits. As we arrive at the first stand, we get this fox almost in sight straight away. However, Chris can't quite get a bead on it and it's not hanging around. So we let the Icotec GC500 from Best Fox Call whale away and sure enough, we see another Charlie coming bombing down the farm track. This one is very much committed. I'm actually filming this one here using my Pulsar thermal unit while Chris gets ready with his Wraith and sees the fox coming in. Although the fox here, as you can see, is quite committed, it is quite some time before it actually comes into range. Now, as I film this fox here at just over 90 yards, and you'll see from Chris's point of view here, the shot looks good, although the round went a tiny bit low. It looks like it may have just grazed this fox underneath. We did walk over to see if we could find a blood trail, but it looks like this one got away, probably with a very close belly shave as the leg cocks out to the side and the tail goes up slightly. I guess this one must have just had a flesh wound. On to the second stand now, and this fox was already in, or just right at the side of the cover. I squeaked it in as Chris takes aim and lets rip, and once again, the shot itself went a tiny bit low, but it went well and truly into the chest cavity. This fox here was a dead fox running, and you can simply tell that by just how much that tail is flailing around. Not only did he hit it in the chest, but as the bullet exited, it also caught the fox's leg as well. Yeah, not a million miles off, but yeah. So he weren't going anywhere with that first shot, but well done for sticking the second one in. Right, let's go and claim Chris's first Cambridgeshire fox. We have seen a couple already, young ones on another field, but they weren't playing ball. This is just another one of those prolific areas where they just seem to always be found. The cover's just up here on the right hand side, you'll not see it in the dark, but that's where the strip of cover is. Great drive, plenty of life around here. We've seen what we've seen so far. Deer, bats, muntjac, roe deer, oh, owls. Head. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> tons one or two hairs. Tons and tons of hairs. That's one thing we're not shy of. I reckon dog fox. I'll take your word for you, know you're out here. Yeah, he's only a little. Dog, little cub dog. Dark, isn't he? Yeah, nice. Very good. Yes, yeah, where's he? Well, yeah, right, that wasn't going anywhere, was it? No. <laughs> nah, straight in the bib. Excellent, well done. Lovely job. We'll get a picture of that. Let's see if we can go and get some more. <laughs> yes. 
that little that little thing would have been dinner, wouldn't he? Oh, he's off. He doesn't like you. How cute is he? That's smart, mate. I wasn't too sure whether or not uh, you could quite tell just how small this mouse was so I stick my index finger in the mix here just for a size comparison but at the same time I didn't want to get bitten so I quickly retrieved it there but yeah a lovely little field mouse uh, it is and doesn't Chris look pleased as punch with himself there with his first well, Cambridge Fox. Have a look on. Looking for him. Looking for him. Let's do lucky corner. Having fun, Chris? I'm having loads of fun. All right. <laughs> so while we head over to our aptly named Lucky Corner, and you'll see why we call it Lucky Corner shortly, coming up next time out, I'm out duck shooting with the keeper on his pond, and boy, what a morning did we have. And I even shot rather well, if I do say so myself. What a morning that was. Best morning's duck shooting I've ever had. So you can see that next week. Now, meanwhile, back out on Fox Patrol, and I'm out with Rick on that same farm track that Chris just so happened to have missed his first fox just now. I'm expecting the Charlies to come out from over here at the back of this orchard or to our far left over near the solar panel. Rick goes out and puts the call at a good 80 yards in front as I film him coming back towards me with the thermal. And just as we get put into position and get the caller going, we're able to entice this beautiful barn owl and I observe it through the thermal going about its hunting escapades. As you'll see in a second, it comes right in close, goes out to the right and then all of a sudden just disappears uh, into the last remaining wheat field here to try and catch its dinner. What a great sight to see. I love seeing stuff like this when I'm out shooting. So as that barn owl goes to digest his evening meal in the neighbouring woodland, all of a sudden I catch movement in the thermal a good 400 yards away and it looks very much like a Charlie to me. So we head over in the Land Rover to see if we can get a little closer. Sure enough, Charlie's out mousing in the field and a simple lip squeak catches his attention enough to come running in. Although I did keep losing it because the straw in this field hadn't yet been bailed up so it kept disappearing and it was rather difficult to track using the night vision. It must have been small. It didn't. It didn't look like it was that far away, but it still looked small in the scope. Oh yeah, dark one. Isn't it? That's not a uh, youngster. That's a dog. Yeah, he's a good-looking fox. That's the second one that was all spotty, you know. Oh, he stinks. Good looking fox, huh? On to stand number two now, and after a good start, we came to this place because we had seen cubs here earlier in the year, but they hadn't finished harvesting the wheat. So we decided to come here now. As this fox here was in range, it probably was on the limit so here, a good couple of hundred yards or more, but I hadn't actually cycled the round uh, or the next round from the previous fox outings. Bit of a schoolboy error there, but I kept squeaking uh, and Rick draws my attention as he's looking out of his window with the thermal to the fact that actually we've got more than one fox in play here. So luckily it wasn't put off. I kept squeaking and this one's coming in, but the trouble is uh, I've got a fox here. Uh, far out to my right hand side. I've got a fox in front of us here on the dike side. This is one of the closest foxes. I've got the one you've just seen coming in behind me uh, and Rick informs me that there is a couple in this field here 
somewhere in and amongst these bales as well. So as is often the case, you want to keep calling, try and get them in as close as possible so that if you could at least uh, get a couple of them down, then you've had a fairly good stand. But as is often the case, you take one shot and the others are going to run for cover. So the first fox is still interested, it's in range. Uh, I take aim and get that one down. Quickly cycle the next round, spin the rifle round to the front of the vehicle and go for that one that was in front here, just a couple of hundred yards. But I'm searching around frantically at the moment with the thermal because I knew that it had come across the dike and it's just gone into this next field and it's somewhere in the corner of this field. I can see it plain as day in the thermal but it just can't pick it up with the NV. Uh, so I have another quick scan with the thermal. Uh, and then there I see it, so I now know that I need to be sort of somewhere similar, or somewhere, sorry, in the vicinity of this corner of the field. I'll just catch a quick eye shine there, zoom in and get ready to take the shot. Two down. So as I go and retrieve the closest fox there, which was shot at around 180 yards, uh, as Rick films me through the hike unit, we get back in the Land Rover to go and retrieve the second fox shot. Although they have just sprayed this field with slurry, uh, Rick can get out and get this one because the flies are horrendous. Oh, fucking flies, Jesus. Well, I'm going to turn off. Right, well I've spoken enough now for a little while, so just enjoy these next few clips guys, and I'll catch you in a short while. Got you that time. Yeah. Well, as you can see, that was a fairly productive session. 
Now, a question that does come up rather a lot is, what do you do with all the dead foxes? Well, look, if we're miles and miles away from home and you've only got one or two, a simple ditch bottom or bottom of a hedge away from any public footpaths will suffice. However, I'm very fortunate that local to me and on the farm, we have access to an incinerator of which gets normally satellite to once every other day. So the foxes go in there and they simply get burned. So hopefully that answers that question. And to answer another question, no, it doesn't smell particularly nice the next day either. Meanwhile, back out with myself, Chris and Rick on our evening's session and we are still bumping into plenty of foxes. Not all of them are wanting to hang around and God only knows how Chris managed to pull this one out of the bag but he shot this fox here at a good 200 yards and the fox went straight down. Number two, nicely in the bag. Fox number three, similarly to fox number one, actually got hit low in the chest and I really don't know how these foxes managed to run sometimes because it had a hole the size of a fist. Although, to be fair, it did only make it about 10 <laughs> feet before it dropped. Yeah, that's fox number three for the evening, walking back. So early we saw a dormouse and check this out. We have got a tiny baby leveret. Just, and it is tiny as well. Just down here in the stubble. And there's my it's hand. bigger than your fist, is it? It's smaller than my hand. You hear that? Look at this tiny little leveret. Bless him. Little baby hair. And that little bugger would soon catch it. He's out here in the middle of the stubble field. So we'll put him back. There you are, buddy. We'll make you settle down. Good boy. Right. I've never seen one that small before in the field. Yeah. Again, this is one of the good things with being out shooting. You get real close to nature that some people just never see. By the time we get back to the truck, time really is ticking on. But fox number four for that evening was coming in like an absolute right. steam train. Great shot. Well done. No. Oh, no, look, he kind of does it again. But I could see him from right over on that far corner. And I knew he was coming up that dike. I bet it's another dog. It's been another dog. Four dogs, yeah. Another new one. Nope, oh, Vixen. Uh, well, you can't be right all the time. Young, young, no, no, it's not young, young. It's... I'll tell you what, she's a good looking fox. No nasty holes or anything. Nope. Straight through where I put it and all. Yeah. Straight through the front. That's a... It's not a. Yeah, no, it's not a new, it's not, it's not a new it's one. It's not a young one, no. Good one to get that. Good breeding stock for this year would have been. Uh, well done, mate. Okay. Cool, does she? No, he's not cool this year. Number four for the evening. Good result. Did you record it on your race? Yes. Oh, well done. Well, well I see, I keep saying yes, but you haven't you haven't uh, looked at the footage yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that came in ever so well. That's a lovely condition. That. It is, isn't it? Yeah, she's a nice bitch. Be a good one to get mounted, that. Well, I think the smile says it all, and once again, Lucky Corner comes up trumps. Now, we did actually end up with five uh, that evening, or Chris ended up with five, so I was very pleased to be able to 
uh, get him in front of the Reds uh, and put on a good show. And I also uh, extend my thanks to Rick as well for driving for the evening. Now I'm back out with myself and the keeper on his shoot uh, and I observe this pair of young foxes in an old pea stubble just next door to the partridge pens. Um, so the first fox went down easily enough, the second one stood there initially in bewilderment uh, as I often do, wondering what's going on, but unfortunately it doesn't come quite close enough for me to feel comfortable taking a shot off the sticks. He soon loses interest and heads for the woodland. I stalk in much further, uh, much further down the field towards the woodland and change my squeak slightly, so it's a good 20 minutes later and all of a sudden the fox appears and this time it feels quite committed. One last tiny little squeak to get it that's extra few feet closer to make sure of the shot and that's good enough for me. A very quick scan around with the MV just in case any more are in the area and about five minutes later another one just appears to my left. This one's actually already making its way towards me so no need to squeak but I do need it to stop before it actually spots me. Oh, I think it might be a bit too late. Well, too late for one of us anyway. Well, luckily the wind's died down a bit. But that was the third fox off this same field. Patiently waited. Definitely young'uns. Oh, these two of them are. There's this one. Um, must be near the only if I can't see it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Steve's over there somewhere, but I'm gonna have to turn my light off because the midges are attacking me somewhat chronic. Sorry? I see you shoot the second one through that thermal. Did you? Yeah. Tell you what, if I do say so myself, that was some class A foot stalking. <laughs> oh, don't know how she wouldn't have got out the Land Rover. Well, yeah. Um, That's a result, isn't it? Got you that time. Yeah. Well, as you can see, I'm out foxing again with the keeper and we've had another successful evening. We're out tonight testing the new Hike Micro Thunder thermal spotter and rifle scope and that'll be featuring in an episode uh, which will be coming very soon. Make sure you tune in next time to catch the duck shooting video. That was an epic little session uh, that the three of us had. Take care, stay safe, and as always, happy shooting.